For this project, we are going to be creating a yin yang zentangle. Luckily, we have had several class periods where we are practicing creating unique designs using lines and shapes. And we have also done a zentangle challenge. So hopefully you have quite a bit of practice creating different designs and patterns. The supplies that you're gonna use for this project are going to be your regular pencil, pencil sharpener, eraser, fine point sharpie, ultra fine point sharpie. You'll also use a ruler for any of your patterns that you want to have straight lines. And then you'll also be using your colored pencils. In our Canvas model, I posted an attachment where you can print out the yin yang template or if you don't have a printer I also posted a link to a video that shows you how to create the yin yang on your own. The first step of this project is going to require you choosing different zentangles or line and shape patterns that you want to fill in one side of your yin yang. Typically this side of the large teardrop or paisley shape of the yin yang is white and then this other large side is black and then the opposite on the circles. So for us we're going to use this large left side to fill in with zentangles and then eventually we will fill in with our sharpie solid black on this other section. I know which zentangles I would like to use so to make it easier for me to fill in the zentangles into this section, I'm actually going to divide this part up into different areas. By doing this, it will help me organize my zentangles better and it will give me a boundary or border for when to stop and start a new zentangle. You can use a combination of straight or curved lines so I'm gonna go ahead and start using my ruler and I'm going to be making sections with straight lines. And a good rule of thumb is to try to have at least five or six different sections. By having five or six different sections, it's gonna give you the ability to include five or six different types of zentangles. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue making these straight lines. And then I think I'm gonna finish with my last line right here. So now when I count, I am left with one, two, three, four, five different sections. I also am going to leave this circle empty. Now that I've created my sections, I'm gonna go ahead and start to fill in the different zentangles. For me, I'm gonna use a combination of organic shapes, geometric shapes, and different types of lines to fill in. So I'm gonna go ahead and start in this section here. This section, I think I'm going to do a grid pattern first. So since a grid pattern requires straight lines, it's really important that I use my ruler to do this part of the zentangle. So I'm just gonna work my way across that entire section I've created, making my grid lines. Now for you, you're gonna be choosing your own zentangles. Your zentangles should not look exactly like my zentangles. Remember, we want to be unique and have our own um, creative identity. So make sure you don't copy what I'm doing because we don't want to have all of our artworks look exactly the same. Now that I've put my first set of lines on, now I'm gonna go back and add in my next set of lines to create my grid. So once again, I'm making sure to use my ruler so that my lines turn out nice and straight. And then when I go to fill in 
with a black and white pattern, it's going to be very precise since I used my ruler. So I'm going to continue working on my Zentangles. I'm going to fill in all five sections with a different Zentangle. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up my Zentangles and then you'll get to see what they look like after I'm finished. Okay, now I have finished my Zentangles in pencil. I made sure to leave this circle empty. I made sure to leave this big section empty. And then I also included a Zentangle in this section here. We want it to have an opposite look. So these will be black, white, and color, where this will be solid black. So once it's finished with your pencil, then you're going to be using your, uh, um, your fine point Sharpie and your ultra fine point Sharpie to do your outlining and to fill in any areas that you want to be solid black. A good thing to remember is you really want to have a balance of black and white and color. So for me, when I start to fill in these sections, I have to think about which part is going to be black, which part is going to be white, and which part I'm gonna leave um, so that I can fill it in with my colored pencil. So I'm gonna go ahead and start to do some outlining. I'm gonna start with these little Zentangles here. I created little um, tear-shaped or paisley-shaped um, Zentangles. These are a very nice organic shape almost kind of resembles a raindrop or a teardrop. Now, when I'm doing my outlining, um, I have to choose between my fine point Sharpie and my ultra fine point Sharpie. If it's something fairly large, you can usually outline it really well with your fine point Sharpie, but if it's something that is small or really detailed, then you would want to use your ultra fine point Sharpie since it is a thinner mark. So as I'm doing this, I'm making sure to follow my pencil lines really well so that I have a nice, clean and crisp outline. Now, right here, it might be kind of hard for you to see, but right here, this little part, I got off track just a little bit and I can see my pencil line. So I'm gonna go back with my eraser and I'm just gonna clean off that little pencil mark so that it's no longer visible. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep working on outlining and filling in the areas that I am doing with my Sharpie. Okay, now that I have finished my outlining of my Zentangles with my Sharpies, I'm now going to go back and fill in the sections that I want to be solid black and then also fill in the sections that I want to have color. Remember, if you have a good balance between black, white, and color, it's going to make your Zentangle patterns more visually interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and start by filling in the section where I have my heart shape or my Paisley Organic Zentangles. I'm gonna do a combination of black, white, and color here. Don't forget, you're also going to be graded on your craftsmanship. So if you need to go back and review the video I posted about how you can um, have good craftsmanship with your colored pencils and your Sharpie, it's really good for you to know that before you start the coloring. Okay, I just finished coloring my first Zentangle section. I thought a good balance would be having the background colors blend from red to orange to yellow. And then I'm keeping the paisley shapes white with their black outline. So when I was coloring, I made sure that I colored in the same direction. I wanted to not have any patchy areas or any of the white paper showing through my colored area. And I also wanted it to be very smooth and blend well from color to color. So that's one of the craftsmanship things that you need to think about when you're doing your coloring. You want it to have really nice, smooth, consistent blending 
um, and you also don't want it to look patchy or to look like scribble scrabble. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue working on my other sections. Okay, I just finished all of the coloring with my colored pencils on my Zentangles, and I also made sure to fill in any areas that I wanted to have black with my Sharpie. Now I need to go and fill in this circle, solid black, and then I also need to fill in this large shape, solid black. That will give us the balance that we usually see in a Zentangle. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this now. Okay, I just finished all of my coloring with my Sharpie. I made sure to do this circle, and then I also did the large organic shape on this side of the yin yang. Now with my Sharpie, I made sure that I filled it in very solid black, and if I had any spots that were looking a little gray, then that let me know that my Sharpie was starting to run out and I should switch to a new one. So if any of your black outlining or your coloring with your Sharpie looks gray, then you need to go back over it and make it solid black. So you have several class periods to work on this, so please take your time. Do not try to do this all in one day. I really want your craftsmanship to turn out nice, and I can't wait to see your yin-yang zentangle. Good luck.